So, first of all, a warm welcome to Mary Theo Sullivan, and I, I'm really honored to have you here for this interview. Thank you. Um, you're very welcome. I am very curious about your book, and I know there are uh, there are many people who are interested in your book as well because you are talking about leadership, and you have uh, a very interesting, uh, I should say, uh, way of targeting leadership because you turn something around and as a coach we need to find something which is challenging and also really important uh, related to the time we're living in right now so that's why i think it's so important many people are challenged in many ways at least not uh, when we are thinking about the uh, covid situation and uh, actually working on distance and we don't have so much time for the normal conversations and the normal meetings we need to be more effective when we are doing something right exactly so the reason i wrote the book was that i have been in industry for a very long time for 30 years and I started way back in the, uh, let's see, I started in the 70s and I left for a while, came back in the 80s. <clears throat> so I've had a lot of time to observe leaders in many different roles. And also I've had leadership positions in my career as well. So I got to see both sides of leadership. And in addition to that, I've worked with leadership on every single level, right from the top, the very top to peers. And we're all called to be leaders at some time or another. And so I think it's incumbent upon people to try to reach down inside of them and, and really feel what it's like to be a leader. <clears throat> One of the things that I found is that when people get into leadership roles, they forget why they're there. The main reason for a leader is to set a role model for his, his or her followers. Mm -hmm. And also to remember that as Richard Branson, the head of Virgin Atlantic says, you wanna treat your staff exactly the way you wanna be treated. And that is one of the biggest problems that I see among leaders today, because when people get into leadership roles, all of a sudden they become amnesic about what it's like to be human. And the entire tenet of my book is based upon leaders learning to be human and learning that <clears throat> everybody around them are human. And the person that you're belittl belittling or swearing at or yelling at has to go home to a family, you know, has feelings, has children, has bills to pay. And the environment created at work is really something that people bring home with them. There's really no big separation between work and personal life because you're the same person whether you're on the job or at home. And so leaders don't always realize the human impact that they're having on their workers that surround them. In the book, I give a lot of examples. I tell stories about things that have happened to people in a situation where you have either a bully for a leader or a milk toast, meaning somebody who's very weak at leadership. One of my favorite stories is in fact something that happened to me in that <clears throat> my leader was insisting that I get a signature from a client in Spain with pen and paper. Now, since 1994 in the United States, electronic signatures have been accepted as legal. Yeah. But my manager was afraid of his manager who would not accept pen and ink regardless of the law that was passed and signed by Bill Clinton in 1994. They acted as if it didn't exist. So they made me do a lot of unnecessary work, spend a lot more money, 
getting a DH, DHL package express to Spain, where my counterpart in Spain had to run around and get his manager to sign the paper in pen and ink, and then spend the money on DHL Express back to the United States. Now, this all took place in the month of August. So as you know, <laughs> in Spain, in August, nobody's working. <laughs> Vacation time. <laughs> Vacation time. So it took, long story short, it took three weeks to get that signature returned back to the United States. And when it finally came back, we had a Spanish translation. The whole document was in Spanish. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I told my manager, look, he signed it, pen and ink. It's in Spanish, push it through the system, and I'll get one of our guys on site here who's a native Spanish speaker to translate it in the meantime. We'll staple it to the contract, put it in the folder, and pass it along. But right now, we want that signature, so send it up to the guy who's got to sign it and, and approve it. Get it approved so I can get the $12 million contract underway with our client. So, you know, because he was so weak, he caused so much extra work, extra expense, oh, and yeah. delayed the signing of the contract because they would not accept electronic signature. So that's just one of the stories that I tell in my book. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yes. So, you know, with, it's very frustrating working in a situation like that. Oh, yeah. I think that was a great example of uh, how bad it can be when you don't have a leader, when you have like a boss, a boss right. manager. Right. That is uh, not a role model, but this was a great example from you as a coach and the challenges we have. Um, when we're talking about this transformation, what is your uh, view how actually to transform this as a good leader when you're noticing people are acting like this mm -hmm. this manager who is on the decision level the high top level without this knowledge about uh, how to actually do something which is better for the company and the, right. for the business well he had the knowledge he just didn't want to do it that's the bottom line so he was stuck in old thinking you know, he was stuck in the past. And yeah. I'm talking about, you know, the past was 20 years ago when this document, when, you know, this, this law was signed into effect in 94. Um, but the challenge is it, you just have to kind of keep your cool when you're, when you're working in this environment because nothing's going to change. And the other situation I found is that I had no access to that next level. So I was cut off from speaking oh, yeah. to the actual decision maker. So I had to do what my weak boss oh, yeah. expected of us, right? So, yeah. you know, and it wasn't, I wasn't the only one that had this. And I'll just tell you a really quick story. So they ran into this time after time after time until they ended up working with Google. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so guess how Google felt about pen and ink signatures? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great no, no, business. No, <laughs> yeah, no business no deal no deal so they had to do an electronic signature for google so oh, yeah. you know they got so pressed into it because it was a big contract with google oh, yeah. and um you know google wasn't wasn't going to hear of a, a, a pen and ink signature that wasn't going to happen but Yes, to transform what has to happen is that these managers really to make them into leaders, because what I was dealing with was a manager. The difference between a leader and a manager is the leader's ability to apply some emotional intelligence and just pure common sense. Yeah. What makes sense in a situation and yeah. to follow their instincts. Oh, yeah. So the gut instinct 
really was to just go ahead and get the electronic signature and say, you know what, we're getting the pen and ink signature. It's going to take a couple of weeks. Let's just go ahead and approve this on a contingency level. And, you know, we can at least get this started. We won't have everybody who's trying to work on this be three weeks late because yeah. we couldn't get a signature for three weeks. Uh -huh. Because to be honest with you, until the signature came through, no money was able to be released because the money was tied to the contract. I so understand. nobody could start work without appropriate funding and yeah. the approval for, for spending that funding. So it was all very dependent upon that signature. So in order to just get it going and get yet paid because we were going to be paid by them or sorry we were going to pay them and then the government would pay us oh, for the yeah. contract right we had to get this signature so to use your gut instinct and common sense would have said let's just get this started because we don't want to deliver to our customer three weeks late of course not. because that's going to cause a lot of issues along down the line and this particular item was one part of a, an assembly that was an entire cabinet assembly that was going to go on a ship. Yeah. So our company was making one piece, was making the entire cabinet with all the electronics in it for a yeah. ship. And this was one piece. So the ship couldn't work without this piece being into this big electronics cabinet. I really they were they were put into racks just like you have a big fancy stereo set and you have different racks with all of your equipment that's what an electronic rack looks like and in a it's called a cabinet because they enclose it in a metal cabinet with a door on it so that yeah. you know it's protected from the elements and things like that but you know true leaders would have followed common sense and also would have paid attention to their instinct and there's yeah. so many cases where that happens. I'm thinking of a company called uh, W.R. Gore. And they are the company that makes Gore-Tex. I'm sure oh, yeah. you've heard of Gore-Tex oh, being yeah. in Sweden, the skiing equipment and skiing clothing. Yeah. So the way Gore-Tex is organized is not on a hierarchical level where we have to ask permission with, in a hierarchy of a more um, powerful manager or somebody who's one level above you or two levels above you. So that doesn't happen at uh, WR Gore. What they have there is called a lattice organization. And teams get together and they decide who's the best leader for the team, who can get the job done. And that teeter, that team leader or the leader of that particular group is like elected by the group. I like it. And the only way you become a leader at WH Gore is to have people follow you. So uh -huh. there is no hierarchy. In fact, the person right now, it's a woman, the current CEO of WH Gore doesn't even want to be called the CEO. They have to have it there for the purpose of Wall Street. But she says, you know, I'm, I'm on equal footing with everybody else here. I'm just the one that makes decisions about finances and other things. Even hiring and firing is up to the individual teams. I really like it. And what they found over time is that nobody ever has to leave there. I mean, they've had They've had consultants that have consulted with them on keeping that lattice organization intact for over 30 years. Wow. So you know that that is a very successful organization. Oh, yeah. And they still are highly profitable. If you know anything about the Gore company, high technology fabric is yeah. only one of their products. They make a, a number of other products from aerospace and defense to, as yeah. I said, ski type clothing or neoprene yeah. type clothing. And um, the reason that it was started that way is because the original founder who founded the company many years ago 
worked at Lockheed Martin, or sorry, it was only Lockheed at the time, and he worked in their skunk works. Um, and I have a whole chapter on that in my book about the Lockheed Skunk Works and also the lattice organization at WH Gore. And what they did at the Skunk Works was there was really no organization to it. They put a bunch of brilliant scientists together and they gave them a problem to solve. So for instance, <clears throat> during World War II, they had to create very quick airplanes. They had rotary airplanes or they had the propeller type planes, but they needed to create a jet engine. And they did that at the Skunk Works in record time in, in under a year, in, in time enough to help World War II come to an end. Wow. So, and they also worked on a lot of different missiles and um, other technology for World War II. So when he left Lockheed Skunk Works, he established his own company because he was more interested in chemistry and the effect or impact of chemicals on fabric and how that would protect people. And so he brought that, uh, that uh, organizational concept of the lattice organization with him from Lockheed Skunk Works and employed that at his company at the core company. Wow, that is interesting. That is some kind of the entrepreneurship and taking it up as an entrepreneur, starting up and something we all can do when we are noticing there are possibilities, I think. And the transformative visionary, I think that is so interesting. And you are talking about and uh, related to your book and what you are talking about. Uh, don't let anything to stop you from actually work together in teams. And it's the team which is the strength in the companies. And exactly. when you as a leader can transform and when you can actually be that leader instead of a manager, I think that's a very good example you have brought up here. I thank you so much, Mary, for doing this. You're welcome. My pleasure. What do you think um, if you have been through all of this and you see the leadership i have noticed there are more afraid managers today than before and that is something which is actually hindering the progress the innovation and um, i noticed that they want to go back to basics instead of actually growing the company and developing and listening to people so they create more uh, employees who are afraid of changes. And yes. that is my, what I noticed. And um, many people, the layoffs actually have an impact on the most creative people because sometimes they have been working a long time and they notice the system, so to say, the right. political system within the companies. And what do you think about that uh, from your viewpoint? Well, it's interesting that you say that because there was a Gallup poll that was done in 2013 that actually proved that 70%, 70% of the workforce, at least in the United States, was disengaged from their jobs. Yeah. And what that means is that it means a lot of different things. One thing is that you're not gonna get the most out of people when they're disengaged, right? And I actually do have a chapter in the book called Peace for Pay. And what that means is you're gonna to come to work every day because you have a mortgage, you have kids that need to go to college, you've gotta pay the tuition, you've got a car payment, you know, you've got a, a house payment, you've got you know, bills, grocery bills, utility bills. You have to come home and, and live and yeah. you can't just walk away because, you know, people are afraid to quit their jobs in this job market because, you know, with the pandemic, so many people have been laid off and lost their yeah. jobs. Really? And it's difficult now to, uh, it's, it's difficult for companies to find employees. So the ones that they have, they want to keep. And some people are a little bit afraid to step out because 
what if there's nothing on the other side? You know, what if they quit and there's nothing on the other side? So what happens is people go to work every day. They put in their 40 hours and they go home. They yeah. do just enough work so that they're meeting expectations. They really aren't going to go overboard unless it's absolutely necessary, but they're not going to volunteer any extra overtime. And they're going to go home and live their lives because they feel that they don't make any difference anyway. Yeah. So with that kind of um, almost apathetic attitude, you yeah. really don't get the maximum out of people. And that comes from poor management, from lack of communication, from lack of buy-in for employees. When employees don't feel that they have something to say that has any impact on their work at all, they are just going to go through the motions. Yeah. And that's what Gallup has found. That's it's true in 70% of the cases. Wow. That, and I think that, the, yeah, sorry. And I think the pandemic has put a little bit of fright into people because of the number of layoffs. People don't want to move around, even though companies say that they're they're begging for employees, they're yeah. really um, high-end workers are not are not looking for work. You know, those are not the jobs with the numbers of people that are out of work that that need positions. The ones that are looking are the waiters and waitresses and service workers. Yeah. And those types of people that did not have high paying jobs and people within high paying jobs, the market's a little bit tight right now. And yeah. so they are just hanging on. They're not looking for anything else right now because it's scary. And the other thing that's scary in today's workforce is the introduction of hybrid, hybrid working, working from home part-time and working in the office. In yeah. my contact with people and my clients, what they're finding is that when the individuals who have been working from home reintegrate into the workforce, let's say at a bank where bank tellers have not been able to take time off, have not been able to work from home because they have to be at the bank. They yeah. have to take people's checks and give out cash at the cash machine. They can't do that electronically, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there are a lot of banks that accept check deposits electronically now, but to get cash, you have to go to the bank. Yeah. And even with electronic, I'm sorry, even with um, drive up banking, you still have to have a person there to dispense the cash. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So these people have not been able to work from home. So when the people go back into the office, there's a resentment saying, well, why wasn't my health as important as yours? Wow. And even though the people that were working from home were productive and getting their work done, they're being asked to come back into the, into the office. And yet they're starting to feel this resistance and this resentment from the people that had been there the whole time. Yeah. So that's another issue to consider. I can really understand that. I am thinking also about I know there are many organizations out there. They really need uh, information, the knowledge, what you're talking about, because this is about effectiveness. It's about profits and actually about survival, I should say, because they're coming new companies who are seeing those things. And if you don't do this change in time, is my, my experience here, then you will be gone because there will come right. better solutions and more people who are more, um, more aware of those uh, things which are needed. What is your suggestion here? Because I think uh, we started here, you asked me about organizations who actually, where you can come out and talk about those things, because I think it's important to talk about the challenges we are standing in front of, and both as employees, because you need to have the courage and actually don't be afraid of losing your job as uh, 
waiting until the day comes. I think it's important to actually do something already now. It could be like, uh, for example, I want to listen to Mary Theo Sullivan because I heard about those things. Uh, what are we doing? What is your suggestion? How shall an employee or a middle manager who might feel the fear or something needs to be done, but they don't have the courage? What is your suggestion? How to bring those things up and actually get in contact with you? Because I think you have a lot okay. of wisdom. All right, great. Yeah, so you can get in touch with me through my email, which is mary at encoreexecutivecoaching.com. Or you can um, get my book at www.visionaryleaderbook.com. So those are two easy ways to get in touch with me. Uh, the other point you made about what's my advice to people that don't have the courage. So yeah. this, is, this is a tough question. Because as I said before, when you have disengaged employees, you're really not going to get 100% from them. So I recommend to people, number one, do not quit your job. Do not quit your job. Do not feel so angry and so depressed and so disengaged that you wanna quit. You may in your mind think you wanna quit, but the other point is where's the paycheck gonna come from that you need? How are you gonna pay your mortgage? How are you gonna pay your kids tuition? So you want to keep your position as long as you can. Meantime, what you can do is when you're in good standing with your company, particularly if you're working for a really big company like GE or Lockheed Martin or General Electric, sorry, um, Raytheon or BAE or any of these big companies, um, General Motors, uh, Saab, any of these companies, these companies have deep pockets and they offer a lot to their employees. So I can tell you that I got my master's degree through Raytheon for free, yeah. right? Oh, right? I got certified as a Six Sigma specialist through Raytheon for free. I got a contract manager certification through Raytheon for free. I got right. a supply chain manager's um, certification through Raytheon for free. And when I was at Lockheed, I got a number of other certifications in the field that I was in. I was in business development then, and I got a number of business development certificates for free. And all of those things are valid universally. They don't just yeah. apply to the company that you're working for, especially something like Six Sigma. So anything that your company offers you for free you need to take complete advantage of that and look upon it as an opportunity to grow your career. Because then when you want to step into some other position, either within the company or outside the company, you have a full repertoire of credentials and qualifications to bring you to that next level. The other thing I highly recommend is using LinkedIn make a lot of connections on LinkedIn. <clears throat> and on LinkedIn, if you're looking for work, you can actually turn on a toggle on your profile that says, I'm open to work. And that way you can let recruiters know that you're open. However, only re recruiters get to see it, not your employer. Your employer does not see that toggle turned on. So it's safe to look. The other thing is on LinkedIn, go through your contact list and see who you know in your contacts and let them know you're looking for a job. So when I was looking for speaking engagements, I went on LinkedIn and Facebook and I mess messaged a number of people that I knew would have some connections to helping me get on the stage or get in front of people or get interviewed or speak to a group. And that has worked out really well because since I reached out and asked, I've received at least three bookings for speaking engagements in the next couple of weeks, which is really, you know, it's really amazing because yeah. the bottom line is when you're looking for something, when you're looking for work, 
looking of, for any kind of opportunity. People are very, very willing to help. Yeah. And I do bring this out in the book as well. Do not be afraid to ask for help. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's a sign of, of strength, not weakness, when you ask for help, because it shows that you're willing to be open and dependent on someone else to offer you a suggestion. And you are then open to reciprocating and helping the person that helped you. And that's called networking. And that's called keeping open communication. And open communication is one of the biggest hallmarks of a good leader. That's really the number one quality of good leader is open communication. So those are my suggestions for how do you muster up the courage it's kind of difficult to fight within the system to fight yeah. back against your boss because you're going to get a lot of resistance yeah. and you might end up getting some blowback, which means, yeah. you know, it could blow up right in your face when yeah. you protest, because I've seen that happen to people and it's very unpleasant for the person that it happens to. Yeah. People can lose their jobs by protesting too much. Yeah. And I've, I've watched it unfold in front of my eyes. So you want to hang in there, take advantage of the work that, uh, or the things that are offered by your company, take advantage of all those freebies, because as I said, big companies have deep pockets. If they're yeah. offering it to you, take it, get your boss to sign off on it. That's the least he can do. It's not going to cost him anything to just sign his name for that, whether it's electronic or not. Yeah. And um, and then leverage your your network, leverage your contacts yeah. and and build your resume that way and let people know that you're looking. I'm really glad to hear this. It's an excellent ending of this interview. We said 30 minutes and I think we are on time. And I'm so thankful for having you here and uh, for welcome. everything you have shared i think it's a lot of knowledge with a quite short of time i also want to thank you as a coach and uh, i know that you are very skilled in what you are doing and you have actually mentioned uh, different kind of companies their names and so on and that is something i also want to add always keep the good uh, contact with your job with the employer employer so you don't destroy anything i actually did the same thing and i got some benefits when i finished and the spanish and, the, and there are always possibilities when you're behaving well before even if you don't like the company and don't think it's so innovative and you don't have so many possibilities just follow your advice is here and I am also saying to all my contacts if you want to have a great uh, speech uh, great coach and who really knows how to do this transformation I would uh, suggest to contact you Maritis Solposalva thanks thank for you. having me thank you you're very welcome so if uh, there is any more you want to say, otherwise we can finish nope. now. I'm all set. I'm all set. I just wanted to say goodbye to you and thank you very much for this opportunity. It was really great. Yeah, I will. I have recorded it, so it will be possible to look at it afterwards. Oh, great. Also. Yeah, well, let I me know. Share the link. Yeah, I will share the link. Thanks send, so send much. Send me the link. Okay. I will send the link. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take You're care. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.